Hi everyone. This is our math lesson for today. So I wrote out a little checklist of things that we're going to get done in this math lesson video. So first it says number grid books. We're going to be talking about those number grids that you started yesterday. Then it says two measurement lesson. So we'll be talking about measurement. And then three, it says assignment. So we'll be talking about what your job actually is today. I just wanted you to know what's coming up here in this video so that you can be prepared to look for all of those parts. So first it said number grid books. Now yesterday you found in your binder this section of the, uh, the binder that says math and you had number grids. The first one was zero to 99 and then 100 to 199. And we said in our morning meeting that we're going to be counting all the way up to the number 1000 eventually. Not in this section because we don't have all the papers for that, but eventually over the next couple months. This is always a favorite first grade activity. Um, we call these number grid books because we work on number grids and we build and build and build till we have so many number grids that we've counted up to a thousand. And this might be something that is really fun for you or it might be really hard for you and that's okay. But our whole goal in doing these number grids and filling in the missing numbers is to just get more familiar with larger numbers and also to notice patterns on the number grid. So yesterday your assignment was just to do this first page. If you did more of the pages, that's great, but you only had to do this first page. And we've talked a lot about the patterns that we see on these number grids, and maybe you noticed them when you were working on, on filling this in yesterday. Maybe you noticed that all of the numbers in this column here end with the number nine start with different numbers but they all end with nine or maybe you notice that all of the numbers in this column all end with the number two so when you're filling in these missing numbers maybe you counted across counting by ones but maybe you actually counted down the number grid and counted by tens that's a way that you could do this. You could fill it in by going down the column and then moving to the next one and going down the column, and moving to the next one um, and counting by tens. Now, when we get to the next page, it gets just a little bit trickier. So I'm gonna tell you some tips um, if you haven't already finished this page. So I could go across here and start to fill in the numbers by counting by ones, right? But if I don't know my, if I don't know the numbers in the hundreds all that well, like if I don't really know what they look like, that might be kind of hard for me because if I don't know what they look like, I won't know what to write. This is where I would suggest actually counting by tens is a little easier. So let me show you what that looks like. You can see that in this column, I started filling in all the eights because I know that every number in this column is going to end with eight. Now, what, do, what else do I put in there, right? Like what other numbers go in there? Well, I can tell that here, the number they have written is 118. The number underneath is 128. So this was 118, 128, 138. I wonder what this one will be. 118, 128, 138, 148. Right. So I figured out that that's a pattern where the tens place is the one that's changing if we're going down the row. So 118, 128, 138, 148, 158. What will come after that? 158, 168, 178, 188, 198. And now look, I filled in almost all of these, but wait a second. 
this one's not done yet. What would come 10 before 118? Well, if I'm looking across this section to fill it in, I see 100, so that's 100, zero, zero, right? 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. So now I'm counting by ones, and I'm noticing that the ones place is the one that changes. So the ones place is the one at the end of the number. So I said 105, 106, 107, 108, and that goes in that column that I was filling in, 109. See how I didn't go in order. I didn't start with the first box here. I actually started with this column way over here because that was a place that looked good to me. I can fill in all the numbers, not necessarily in order, but I can use what I know about counting by tens backwards and forwards and counting by ones backwards and forwards to fill in those numbers. And I, when I say the patterns like one, zero, one, one, zero, two, one, zero, three, that really helps me to visualize the number and to make sure I am counting in order on these pages. So you can develop a pattern that works for you. That is completely fine. But I'm telling you that when you fill this in, you don't have to start with the very first box on the page. You can kind of start wherever you want as long as it makes sense for you and you are recognizing what patterns are on the rest of the page. So by the end of these two weeks of remote learning, you should have all of these number grid pages complete. So there's one one, two, three, four of them. You don't have to do them all today. You don't have to do them all tomorrow, but just by the end of these two weeks, you should have those complete. And I'll keep reminding you about um, making sure that you're working on them so that they get done by the time we go back to school. And like I said, when we do go back to school, I will be giving you more pages because we'll eventually be counting all the way up to a thousand and you'll need more pages to be able to do that. Okay, so on our checklist for t this video, the first one was number grid books, check. The second one is measurement lesson. So we've done a lot of work with measuring and non-standard measuring over the past couple months, right? So non-standard measurement is when you measure something using a unit like a paperclip or a pencil not using a unit like an inch or um, using a ruler, like that's something that everyone would agree on is a way to measure things. Non-standard measurement is when you use a different kind of unit. So when we've been measuring things, we've been using straight lines and measuring those lines. For example, back in November, I had you find some toys and line them up and you had to measure them in that line. Or I had you measure something larger, like I measured the back of my chair over here. Maybe you measured an entire room in your house, but you were measuring in a straight line. Today we're talking about measuring a crooked path a crooked path. So that means that this line that we're measuring is not going to be straight. So I'd like to introduce you to Angie Ant. Angie Ant has to get from where she was eating food back to her home. So she's going to start over here and she's going to walk along a path that's not straight and she's going to get back to her house. Our goal is to figure out how long is this path that Angie Ant has to walk? Well, it's not a straight path, is it? So I have to use a different technique when I measure with my paper clip. Now, when I put my paper clip here to measure my line, I might find that the measurements are not exact and that's okay. When I put my paper clip like this with the end of the paper clip touching the end of the line, there's still a little bit extra. 
um, sticking out of this line over here. That's okay, I'm, I'm not really that worried about it. I'm going to call this section one paper clip. We're not going to do halves because we're not really sure how to add halves yet. And so I'm just going to have us use whole numbers for this. So this section is one paper clip. Now I'm going to measure the next section. Now I had trouble holding up the paper clip and holding the board and moving the paper clip and counting it because I just only have two hands. So I made marks on my line instead. I went like this. I put my paper clip on this section and then I marked off where the paper clip stopped. So now I know that the end of the paper clip goes right here where that mark is. And then I marked the new section and the end of my paper clip goes right here where the mark is. And this is what I came up with. So when I measured Angie Ant's path from where she was eating food back to her home, I measured it in sections. This was the first section that was one. And then one, two, three. This next section was three. And then this next section was one, two paper clips long. So I can write a number sentence to show what I just discovered. I discovered that the path was one paper clip plus three, one, two, three, plus two, one, two, for a total of six paper clips long. And that's how long this crooked path is that I couldn't measure in a straight line, but I could measure in sections with my paper clip. Now, instead of saying one, and then one, two, three, and one, two, I could just count them all together. I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And that would also give me the same exact answer. I could count them in sections and write a number sentence for myself, or I can count them all at once since I have them marked off. So the last thing on our checklist today says that we have an assignment. So I just want to let you know what you'll need to do to turn in on Seesaw today. You have a page of homework that's 5-7 in your home link book, and I'll go over that in just a second, but that's actually about measuring a crooked path as well. The other thing I want you to do is to measure your own crooked path. Get out your whiteboard and your marker, which you brought home with you from school, and draw a crooked path. That means a path that is made up of straight lines, but it's not one continuous straight line. If I drew a bunch of squiggly lines, I would have a really hard time measuring that with my non-standard unit. So make sure that your lines are straight and that they are connected like mine are here, but that they're not just one straight line across, that they're a bunch of straight lines connected to each other. Then you're going to take a non-standard measurement unit like a paper clip or maybe it's a marker cap, maybe it's a Lego, maybe it's a little toy that you have, and you're going to measure that crooked line with your non-standard unit. So I want you to take a picture of yourself with the crooked line that you drew and make sure you tell me how long it is and what you used to measure that crooked path. Then make sure you do homelink 5-7. Uh, when you do this homework, if you discover that you don't have a paper clip at home, that's fine. Just use something else that's small that you can measure with, um, and then just tell me what it is. So at the part right here that says, this path is about blank paper clips long, cross out the part that says paper clips and just write down what you did use if you don't have a paper clip at home. All right, have fun measuring.